In many commercial applications, for precise instrument control, a vibration loop is installed immediately before where the tube connects to the instrument. The vibration loop in this picture was bent using 3 8 inch OD tube while using a 15 16 inch radius tube bender. Any size tube with any radius tube bender can be used to bend a vibration loop by using the following information as a template. Through the use of the system of tube bending which is explained in the book Tube Bending Simplified, any bend can quickly and easily be laid out on any tube and then be bent with a tube bender. The size of this book is 4 and 1 half inches by 5 and 1 half inches and the book is 81 pages of the best and the only information that you will ever need to do any tube bending. This is a diagram of a vibration loop. Always make a rough sketch of anything that you will be bending. Anytime that you are bending anything, a sketch will help to visualize what will be bent. Never bend a tube around a pipe by hand. Anyone who would make any tube bend around a pipe by hand does not care enough to do work on any job for anyone ever. This type of person, due to their narrow-minded tube bending knowledge, is incapable of doing any craftsman-like tube bending work. The proper bending tool has been invented, and all experienced bending mechanics will use the proper tool to bend all bends, so that all bends will be consistent, eye-appealing, and identical. Old school thinking was to bend a vibration loop around a pipe by hand. In the past, a good tube bender, along with the proper bending knowledge, were not available, so it was difficult to bend a vibration loop with any degree of craftsmanship. New school thinking is to always use the proper tool for the job on every job. There are only two times that anyone will ever bend tube around a pipe by hand. One, a tube bender is not available, or two, the person with the tube bender does not know how to use the tube bender which they have. An elliptical shape for the vibration loop is easily bent by inserting a travel piece between the two 180 degree bends. Due to the physical size of all tube benders, no tube bender is capable of bending a bend greater than 180 degrees. For additional vibration loop information, refer to pages 70 to 73 in the book. When laying out any vibration loop, the travel piece between the two 180 degree bends must be long enough to provide room for the physical size of the tube bender. The physical size of the tube bender is measured from the edge of the tube bender before the tube latch to the zero point on the radius block of the tube bender. This is usually a distance of approximately two inches. The zero point on the tube bender designates the starting point for every bend on the tube. The travel piece in every vibration loop between the two 180 degree bends allows the tube bender to be removed and repositioned after bending each 180 degree bend. After viewing this diagram and combining it with the tube spoon marker and the tube layout schedule for this diagram, this vibration loop will only take five minutes to lay out, mark, and bend. Every vibration loop which uses this radius tube bender will be identical to every other vibration loop which is bent with this radius tube bender. This three-dimensional diagram shows one six and five eighths inch leg, one seven inch leg, two 90 degree bends, and an elliptical expansion loop. This elliptical expansion loop is centered and rises into a vertical position on the 12 inch travel piece between the two 90 degree bends. This is a tube spoon marker for a 15 16 inch radius tube bender, showing the tube bend dimensions which are needed to bend this example of an expansion loop. Always make a tube spoon marker so that all bend dimensions for all bends will be identically marked. To make this tube spoon marker, refer to pages 7, 8, 12, and 15 in the book. This diagram shows the five individual lengths of tube for the dimensions which are listed in the next diagram. After centering this vibration loop between the two 90 degree legs, it is obvious from the diagram that dimension number two and dimension number four are the same length. This diagram which shows the tube layout schedule for this expansion loop was made by looking at the previous diagram. To make a tube layout schedule, refer to page 30 in the book. 
In this diagram, the vibration loop for the tube layout was bent before any other bends were bent. While bending any vibration loop, the tube needs to be rotated through a complete 360 degree plane. If any bends were previously bent onto the tube, a 360 degree bend loop cannot be bent. The bends for this vibration loop illustrate that by using the information in the book mentioned in diagram number two, once the tube is completely marked, bends do not have to be bent in any specific order. In addition to paying by check or money order, all orders which are placed through Western Union, both domestic and foreign, can be completed in one day to include having the book mailed to you. If you would prefer to use a credit card, this book is also available through the Amazon.com website.